All right, our final presentation is by Ms. Elizabeth Garcia, a senior undergraduate student majoring in wildlife ecology and conservation at the University of Florida. Her interests include avian and mammalian ecology and conservation, effects of urbanization on carnivores, and human impacts on coastal environments. She spent the summer in 2018 in Everglades National Park as an Everglades BioCorps intern, working on various projects and continues research on food webs in the Everglades. She has worked with avian and mammal ecology labs where she assisted with graduate student research on hierarchy and mixed avian flocks and analyzing camera trap data to assess patterns of mammalian carnivore distributions in the Pak Tiger Reserve in India. Is it Pak or Paki? Pak Paki Tiger Reserve in India. Elizabeth is an environment, educational outreach coordinator for the student chapter of the Wildlife Society, vice president of GREEB, Gators Ready for Exceptional Birding Experiences, and an artist for the Rattlesnake Conservancy. And in the summer, she begins a, a stint as an environmental education intern at Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge. And today, she's going to talk about understanding native species resilience to invasives in the greater Everglades ecosystem. Welcome, Elizabeth. Good morning. Thank you for coming. So as we all know of the hundreds of species that live in the greater Eco Ec sorry, Everglades ecosystem, unfortunately many of those are non-indigenous, including the old world climbing ferns, the jaguar guapote, and the infamous and everyone's favorite Burmese python. So we've been studying Everglades, we have been studying in, sorry, invasive species in the Everglades for decades trying to figure out how they got here and more importantly how to get rid of them, the million dollar question. And our approach to it is by analyzing food web complexity to see how native species build up or even have resiliency against the invasives based on the structures of food webs. I'm going to start with the basics of what a food web is. Well within each food web is a food chain, is a food chain so it's a singular path that energy and nutrients follow throughout the system and food webs contain multiple pathways for these nutrients and energies to flow through and that is what we are interested in, these various connections. So here we have a simple food web versus a more complex web, the obvious difference being the number of average path lengths between them, which just means that the average output per input into the system, such as carbon, it's like the number of paths it takes to exit the system. So here's another example of a complex food web, and I'm going to introduce a predator into the system, of course the Burmese python, and let's say that over time species F disappears. This is due to the added predation pressure from the Burmese python. It doesn't seem to have that much of a significant impact. Species H does lose one prey item, but nothing too significant. And then as time keeps going on, species H disappears as well. And now species I has less prey availability, and this is starting to increase predation pressure on the remaining prey items. And I has to compete now with G and the python for species D and E. So time keeps going on, the python stays in the system, and species G is gone. Now species I only has one prey item to choose from while the python still has two. And this adds severe predation pressure to species D and species E. And a dramatic conclusion to that would be a species D and E completely disappeared. But as you can see based on these events, just the introduction of a foreign predator can decrease the number of species drastically at each trophic level. And it is through these introductions that it can disrupt or imbalance the ecosystem. And that is what we are really interested in because our food web <laughs> would look more like that. So what we are trying to create is a high resolution, up-to-date ecological framework and it can be a reflection of the functionality and structure of ecosystems, food webs in the greater Everglades ecosystem. Using previous published literature, we want to create an open access framework. 
that is driven by data that's been collected from previous field work where we basically we just go out and we find papers that talk about literally every paper on whatever species we're interested in seeing what they're eating what time of year is very important because the food webs depend heavily on the numbers of linkages or relationships the strengths of these relationships when the foreign species is introduced what trophic level it's introduced and there's so many variables that go into it and what we are hoping to do is make this a public an open access framework so that way it can be used in all types of interdisciplinary research whether it's network ecology hydrology and it can be an overall powerful tool for risk assessments to understand the resiliency of these ecosystems whether they're already susceptible to invasion and thank you Questions? Hello, thank you. Hi. Um, I'm appreciating the diversity in the Everglades, and I'm thinking about how much we might not know about some of these species. So is there a way for your model to check whether its estimated estimation of resiliency is accurate? Well, what we're hoping is, like as you can see, it's going to be a very complex food web. And the idea behind it would be that the more connectivity within the system, it could reflect the more diverse a system is, the greater the resiliency it is. But what's really important, too, is the strengths between each node or each species. So, and it, and it also depends the year or like the season, breeding season, what stage of reproduction or growth each individual is. So it's definitely, it's still in the works. It's definitely a very big, bold project to tackle. But I feel when it's accomplished that it definitely can reflect how well of an indicator it will be for resiliency and biodiversity. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question about which invasive species has the greatest impact on the Everglades, and then is there any positive impacts of any of the invasive species you studied? Well, I, I don't know which species is the most impactful. I would say the Burmese python, but of course you have to think of marine systems with the, er, the freshwater systems as well for the jaguar guapote, the armored catfish. Like, that's a whole other world that I don't know too much about. So maybe terrestrially, it could be the Burmese python that's very destructive. There's also, outside of the park, the black and white Argentine tegus. So depending what systems you're looking at, definitely each seems to have their own invasive species that's doing the most harm. As for positives, I personally don't know of any positive impacts the invasives are having. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and Good presentation, so I have two questions, if that's all right. One's yes. sort of a fun one, because I'm curious. Oh, um, and then the second one's more serious. So the first one for the fun one, you had that nice diagram of the more complex ecosystem that's more like our greater Everglades one. What was the red dot? Oh, this red dot? Yeah. <laughs> this is just a fun picture that my okay. advisor gave me. <laughs> so gotcha. I would, well, it could be, could start with like parafine. It could be at the very bottom of all things. It depends to if this is an aquatic or terrestrial, sure. it could be producers, plants, anything gotcha. you want it to be, depending okay. on what you're <laughs> And, and so you mentioned that you know, there's a number of invasives and different models. And um, I think you mentioned you might be collaborating with others. And do you have like an open framework for how oh, you're, for open you're doing access. that? Yeah, what I meant by that? Yeah. So what we mean by that is what we're hoping to make a publicly available page that people can actually go on and click and you can see the actual food webs and it's still in the works as to how that will visually look because if anybody sees that, that's scary. But it's more so if you're doing research that pertains to the Everglades, you can go and see, well, this is what my species impacts and what's impacted by it. And so it'll be really great for invasive ecology as well to see if this 
catfish, this armored catfish comes into the system. Let me see what we know that it's been proven to be eating and see how it's impacting all the other nodes or trophic levels below or above. Okay, I got one final question for you. You yes. know, we have this big experiment going on in Everglades National Park that was thrust upon us where we, because of the python, have lost most of the small and medium-sized mammals. So there is a huge food web experiment underway right now, which I don't think many of us are looking at or anybody's really looking at. Do you have any guess as to what the first outcome of those shifts might be? Just to, what, would, what do you think the first big food web change we might see from the disappearance of all these probably herbivores and other predators? From what I know, the rodent population, the rats, seem to be pulling through, and a majority of it is rabbits and birds, but what I think the outcome would be after putting it together is definitely, like you're saying, a big decrease in, could be the primary consumers, and it's gonna create more competition for whatever's available, but I feel like there's gonna be like those big gaps, like how I showed, where the trophic levels have less and less species. So it's gonna be very gappy is what I would say. Not, it could be not as diverse anymore. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, if nothing else, I hope you are inspired. I mean, that was just a wonderful array of presentations by some very talented youth. And I can say that we have hope for the future, great hope. Uh, good reason to be excited and optimistic and know that uh, the world will be passed along to good hands when you see this kind of effort already underway, both in the U.S. and our neighboring uh, Bahamian, uh, with our Bahamian neighbors. So a couple of quick announcements before you leave. Uh, remember, no matter what, please approach these folks around the break that we're about to go to and anywhere else you might see them during the day or tomorrow. Engage them in conversation and talk to them. Uh, for those of you that we didn't get photos of, please hang around.